Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash charitystrike. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Ladies and gentlemen, TCS Network is proud to bring you the Charity Strike. Now here are your favourite assholes: Midlife Crisis and Rebound. Oh yeah, that was like beer opening and surround sound. Oh man. That's boner-tastic. Thank you for the applause, everybody. Thank you, bitches. Yeah, keep your shirts off. Yes. Don't put them back on. warm in here. Yeah, ever. I love your sweaty tits. They're miazzing. Anyways, welcome into the show, everybody. I'm Greek the Rebound Jones. Sent across from me, Midlife Crisis. What up, bitches? Yeah, we love the bitches. Anyways, lots of news today. Lots of not only just news, but actual good news. It's been a little slow lately. Other than some rapes and some uh, bounty scandals, it's not been that great. Just the usual sports stories. Right. I like how I put that. Other than rapes. Other it's than like, that. Because yeah. rapes are usually pretty great. You oh, know? Well, yeah. Depends if you're giving or receiving. Right. That's Which true. It could be good either way. Hey, maybe Depends. they like it. Hey. Maybe so. Anyway, so we got big news. I'm sure you guys have all heard the big trade. We will get into that momentarily because that is huge. Uh, the official preseason has started. Football is well underway. We got happenings and going ons and even injuries already. Whoa. Yeah. Big surprise. Chargers lost somebody important already. Oh, God. Who's shocked by that one? Drew Brees? No. Oh. No, not at all. Oh, okay. He's just glad he's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, we got all that going on. Before we get into it, though, make sure you guys, if you're going to buy something from Amazon, you go... Oh, my God. Dogs are fighting. <laughs> There's loud noises. Uh, if you're going to go to Amazon, uh, go to the Charity Strikes webpage first, the charitystrike.com. Click on our Amazon banner and then buy lots of stuff. I think they're doing it. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe they're just fighting over the computer to go to we're, Amazon. We're talking about... I uh, Probably so. Yeah. Gonna, I know one of them wants to get a dildo real bad. Yeah. And then the other one wants some uh, some kibble. <laughs> also, make sure you check out Jenny O. Thanks again to Jenny O for being on the show oh, last week. What an excellent show we had. And I was, and I was finally listening to it this morning. Uh, what a sexy voice she has. Good Lord. And a lovely young lady indeed. Yes. And does a nice, look, nice person. Yeah, doesn't look half bad in a skirt either. Um, also, so thanks to her, uh, sourstudios.com is where you can find all her photography stuff. She's a great photographer, took all our pictures, which you can find on thecharitystrike.com. So check her out if you need pictures taken, nude or otherwise. Oh, she's she, awesome. She made uh, you look halfway decent. I know. Yeah. That's a lot of Photoshop hours. I tell you. Yeah, so she's amazing. Uh, make sure you guys check out our friends Adam and Reggie over at theadamandreggieshow.com. They're uh, pretty funny guys. Talk about all kinds of stuff. Theadamandreggieshow.com. They're also on iTunes. Make sure to check them out. And also, if you're a hockey fan, Adam of the Adam and Reggie Show has a cousin who has a hockey blog called What the Puck. Wow. Yeah, you can find that on uh, Facebook, What the Puck. Check it out. He's a good writer, lots of hockey stuff. Also, still more business. All right. OurCityRadio.com. We can, you can find us there on Wednesdays and Saturdays. That's the day after we air. Uh, 4 o'clock, check the schedule on the sports channel. We're there. And finally, the Stitcher Radio app. You can find us there. You can get us on demand. You can download us anytime. You don't have to waste your hard drive space or your phone space. Just stream us live. It's uh, pretty balls-tastic, if I may say so myself. As is the show. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, two, it's, you get more balls-tastic as you get to Stitcher and Charity Strike and right. put them together. And it's like two balls for the oh, price of one. Good God. It's like one sack. I remember once I had two balls, but anyway. Then the war happened. Anyways. No, I uh, got married. Oh. <laughs> or the same thing, war, marriage, whatever. If you've been married three times, uh, are you negative balls by this point? Oh, pretty much. Oh, wow. Yeah. Painful. Anyways, uh, speaking of balls, we got a little voice. And brain. Oh. Anyway, what? go ahead. Brain? Well, <laughs> I had to learn the first two times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Still catching on. Here's our voicemails. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Rebound from the Charity Strike. <laughs> yeah, that's Trigger Mike. Yo! We're not here right now, and there's a good chance we're off at a Justin Bieber concert. So make sure to leave a message, and uh, maybe we'll play it on the air. Buh-buh. Oh, daddy yo! Haku Hank! Calling in with his episode 57. Haku! Here we go! Jenny O! Pull the first. Grinch's overwhelming thirst. Hank has for sexy. Oh, Daddy O's! 
thanks for having Jenny Owen, my favorite episode, and now she's my girlfriend. Well, at least she said she wanted to be my girlfriend. I don't know what that means. I don't even know where she lives. Fuck, I'm still going to have to fake it, I guess. Have a good day, motherfuckers. Oh, Haiku Hank. I have it's, a feeling he knows where she lives. He's quite the stalker. I was going to say, I have a feeling he hangs outside of her house. On I a, wouldn't be surprised. On a mostly daily basis. Um, so, Jenny O, be careful about yeah, that. I would hire security if I were you. Yeah, exactly. Um, and even more important important business than voicemail is Chick of the Day. Did you say impotent? Yes. Oh. You know all about that. Uh, today's Chick of the Day, being the Olympics, now we got to pick an Olympic chick. Australian swimmer Stephanie Rice. Uh Man, she's hot. Oh, she is. Yeah. And if you want to see a picture of her, check out the Charity Strikes Facebook at Facebook.com slash the Charity Strike. Oh, God, that was oh, hard to remember. Wow. Uh, yeah, we got a picture of her up on there. Mm. Stephanie Rice. She is uh, pretty fucking hot. And, and if you I, feel, huh? I, I heard she gets wet a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Real wet. Oh, I mean, baby. just drenched. Oh. Yeah, just top to bottom. Yeah. Oof. Tell me. But then she goes swimming. Yes. So make sure and check her out on our Facebook page. And I forgot to mention this earlier. If you guys want to call in, it's 805-419-3679. Call in during the show. We'll talk to you. Call in after the show. Leave a voicemail. Voicemail? What was that? It was like mail and message put together. Uh, and then we'll play it on the air for you, just like Haiku Hank, who uh, likes to call in a lot. Yes. And we love his calls. Yes. And if we love his calls, we'll really like your calls. Yeah. Obviously, our standards are very low. Yeah. So on that note, I guess we should <coughs> actually get on to sports. News. Sports news. And uh, we're starting off with basketball today. I wonder why. I just can't figure it out. Maybe because of Dirk Nowitzki. Oh, yeah. Congrats. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way to dribble up and down the court. Just like I'm yeah. the um, In fact, I actually have better music than this. Why did I even play this? Stand by for the better music. Better than this? Oh, man. Good news to all the Laker fans like us. Bynum is officially oh, gone. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank God. My offer's still good. I'll help him pack. Yeah, I will help him pack. Get him out of here as soon as possible. Yeah. The trade is official. Well, no, it's still at this point pending NBA approval, With which if we learn anything from the Chris Paul trade, it'll get denied. Oh, God, please don't say that. So we're still waiting on David Sturt, but uh, at this point, it's uh, kind of official. Dwight Howard is coming to the Lakers. And we no longer have to deal with that fat, lazy ass Andrew Bynum. Oh, God. you know, I kind of feel the same way I felt when uh, the Lakers got Pau Gasol. Yeah, I was extremely happy they got Pau Gasol. I was even more happier that they got rid of Kwame Brown. Right. So it's kind of a yay. It's kind of a double orgasm kind of thing. It really is. My shorts are so sticky. Yes. Um, thank God. So here, I'll run out the details real quick. The Lakers will receive Howard. Obviously, it's a four-team trade. The Nuggets will get Andre Iguodala. The 76ers will receive Andrew Bynum and Jason Richardson. <laughs> yeah, good luck, assholes. And the Magic will get Aaron Aflalo, Al Harrington, and Nikola Vucevic. And also one protected future first-round pick from each of the three other teams involved. Lakers also happen to pick up Earl Clark and Chris Duhon. And um, Magic will re- Oh, and the picks that the Magic get are the Nuggets 2014 first round. 76 or 2015 first round and the Lakers 2017 first round and the Magic will also be getting the other pieces uh, of the first round pick from uh, or one of the pieces from the first round pick from the 76ers his name is Mo Harkless so there's that I think the 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 key to the whole deal was the Lakers got Earl Clark yeah fuck yeah. Dwight they've been, Howard they've been trying to get Earl for years I know we finally made that happen yeah. or oh, is that Oral uh Maybe I screwed up on that. I've been working on Oral for years. Yeah, me Lakers have been working on Oral. <laughs> so, uh, thank God we have gotten rid of Bynum. I am so happy. Yes. Um, I'll play this song for Dwight. It's called Welcome to L.A. I don't... Uh, God. The only problem with Dwight, besides the fact he's wishy-washy and has not you know, committed to a long-term deal with the Lakers yet, is the fact that we probably won't see him till first or second month of the season due to his back injury. Oh, he's rehabbing. He's yeah. rehabbing, and it's not going overly fast. And, you know, you don't want to rush him back early, obviously, Right on the back surgery. Uh, so it'll probably be a month or two into the season before we see him, which sucks. But in the meantime, I am still I would still rather see the Lakers without Bynum and waiting on Howard than with Bynum. 
Yeah, when you look at what your choices are, it's either wait for Bynum to get off the his injury or Howard. I would prefer to wait for Howard. Yeah, well, I think Bynum will be back in time for the season. Most likely. Bynum? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he just had some knee procedures done. Yeah, but I mean, I'm... I get he's injury prone anyway. Yes, so. he is. This is Dwight's first injury. I think before his back injury, he only missed two games, right? His entire career. I think so. Something like that. He's a lot more uh, stable physically than Bynum. Yeah, probably mentally too. Although, <laughs> and we're not sure about he's, that. He's a bad decision maker, but at least he's more yeah. mentally stable. Uh, hopefully, he chooses to sign a long term deal with the Lakers afterwards. And I think after you know being in LA and becoming a big star, he will. You know, before. Shaq came to LA. You only knew Shaq if you're a basketball fan. And I think once Dwight Howard moves to LA, people are going to be able to say Dwight Howard, and non basketball fans, even non sports fans, will know who you're talking about. You know? Yeah, I, I like uh, one, the way uh, one sports uh, announcer said it this morning. He'll be here for to take the Lakers for a test drive. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, and I, I think I think once he's in LA and gets the atmosphere and the, and the, you know all the nice things about LA. Which there are some nice things. Oh, yeah. Um, a couple. I, I think they can convince him to stay. I mean, you know, there's going to be some money out there. Chances are it's going to come down to the Lakers and Dallas at the end of the next season. Yeah. And so I, I think the Lakers can hang on to him. Uh, Magic Johnson's very confident. I'm quoting Magic. Yeah. I think Howard will be a Laker for a long time. So. Well, uh, and even better news with the whole Dwight Howard thing. Obviously, we know Dwight's in it for the money as well. And the really nice thing about setting this up with one year on his contract, the end of next season, the Lakers, a lot of contracts are going to be up. I know Meta is going to be up. Steve Blake's going to be up. There's going to be a ton of contracts that get dropped at the end of next year or the end of this coming season. And they also won't have, you know, Bynum to be paying. So they're going to have a lot of room to drop some dead weight and be able to give Dwight Howard the max deal. Yeah, and if I understand the whole free agent thing, which I don't probably don't because I'm not an attorney, now that Howard is on the Lakers, they can match any offer. Yes. So they got that going for him, too. Yeah, he'll become a restricted free agent, I believe. Okay. And, uh, something like that. And they'll be, yeah, they'll be able to match. But um, but with all the people you know, jumping off the team or potentially jumping off the team in the yeah, next season, more room. huge cap space for the Lakers, a lot of money to be given to Dwight Howard. Because, uh, you know, Meta's $8 million a year, whatever he's making, is far too much. And Steve Blake's making... I mean, just so many people on that team making too much money right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At least we don't have to pay for Bynum's contract anymore. And Kobe's happy. Mm-hmm. Kobe said he's extremely happy that they were able to get Howard without sur- surrendering Gasol. Yeah. In fact, this is from Kobe's Facebook. He says, well, it looks like Superman has found a home. I wish nothing but the best for Big Bynum. I hope he follows what was a great season last year with an even better one next year. I know LA is excited about the deal and rightfully so. The Lakers landed a piece that will hopefully carry the franchise long after I'm gone. I have spoken to Dwight Howard already and we are locked and loaded to bring back the title. Wow, what a summer Jimmy and Mitch have had so far. Unreal. I'm focused on our semifinal game against Argentina, but I have ha- or, but I had to pause for a few seconds to send you my thoughts in case you were curious. P.S. The white bitches in Europe are awesome. Oh, yeah, it was weird. I don't know why he put that in there. I don't either. But the last little bit. He would know. Yeah, he does like those white bitches. He does. So Kobe's happy. The fans are happy. The franchise is happy. I mean, who, who else could be happy? Well, Orlando's not. The fans. Yeah, they. Well, and Orlando. I, to me, they they kind of got the worst part of the deal. But you know, I mean, I guess they had no choice. Is either get rid of him now or just lose him altogether in a year. So. Right. At least now they're getting something for him. Now. Yeah. The the sportscasters who I don't pay attention to are all saying that. Um, Orlando got the the shit into the stick of this four team trade, and they kind of did because um, you know they got a couple of whoever players who they get they got uh, Aaron Aflalo who I actually like I think Aaron Aflalo is like really good uh, Al Harrington and uh, Nikola Vujicic Vujovic who I don't know much about Al, Al Harrington's pretty good too um, Aaron Aflalo is obviously the best part of the Magic pickup in that whole situation he's a good guard yeah i like him a lot um and they get some first round picks now the big thing for the magic is they get to dump contract basically right and they get to pick up people with smaller contracts so they're definitely in a rebuilding process they're going to be getting first round picks for a few years from these teams along with these new players if they're lucky they can keep a flalo and harrington after their contracts expire which i don't exactly know when that is um so at at first it seems like they get the raw end of the deal, but uh, I think they'll they'll start to rebuild and possibly put a good team together. Yeah, and, and kind of makes me wonder what is Kupchak doing for Magic? You know, we mm-hmm. could maybe you know 
blowing him or something. Sucking him off. Yeah, I mean, he got uh, Shaq. Well, that, that was actually Jerry West that got yeah. Shaq. Yeah, don't give but, Kupchak too much yeah. credit here. Um, but it, I guess as Lakers history, you know, you you go with the big centers, I mean, but, you know, they got Shaq uh, from Orlando. Now they're getting Howard from Orlando. It didn't really give up a lot. Right. But you even, can even go back farther than that where they Chamberlain. got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Kareem, yeah. from uh, Milwaukee. They got Chamberlain from Philadelphia. And even, you know, way back into the 50s, I believe it was, uh, which they didn't trade for him. I think he came in, the Lakers was his first team. But, uh, you know, the the big center, oh, God, now his name, I had his name right here in my head two seconds ago. Oh, that guy. Yeah. He, yeah, anyway, their anyway. first center ever. Oh. Mikan, George Mikan. Oh, okay. Wow, thank you for yeah. reminding me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, who, Cheers. you know, back then was he dominated the league. So they have a history with centers, and uh, looks like they can continue that with Howard. Hopefully next year Howard will be convinced to sign. Yeah. And, it, and it's really not that bad for Bynum either. Bynum, who actually grew up not too far from Yeah, about an hour away. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, maybe he, you know, good. Maybe he'll decide he likes it there. Yeah, he hasn't commented on whether you know he's going to sign or not sign or whatever. But uh, you know, a team like the Seventy Sixers will be able to offer him the max deal. Yeah, which I'm is, sure you know you what know. he 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 wants to play where the money's at. He doesn't give a shit. He's even uh, said he doesn't uh, care course, where he plays. Yeah, as long as there's a bank in that town to cash his checks, right? He's okay. Yeah, and I'm sure his agent will convince him not to sign just so he can you know get. And the the most money he can get. So yeah, unless they can give him the most. As long money. as it's not with L.A., I, I wish him the best. Yeah, something I I heard that if he waits till free agency, if he signs with Seventy uh, Sixers next season, they can give him a five year, one hundred two million dollar deal. So oh. that's that's big money. That's a lot of money. I think He's way overpaid already. I'll so. say yeah, I think that's really overpaying him yeah. at that point. Um, now this is kind of funny. Meta was people ran into Meta World Peace at a nightclub in Hollywood about three weeks ago. Before, obviously, this trade went down, and they asked him what they thought about Dwight being traded to the Lakers, and <laughs> here is uh, his words on that. How do you think the Lakers are going to do? Huh? Do you think, do you think the Lakers are going to be able to get Dwight Howard? I mean, I just hope dancers have a great time. Uh, the cheerleaders. That's hey, man, the, the deal's getting closer, man. They don't come to see Dwight, they come to see the cheerleaders. Stop playing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm with the air on. They don't come to see Dwight, they come to see the cheerleaders. Uh, that's not totally... <laughs> Inaccurate. They kind of do. Uh, I think they come to see the cheerleaders, but they pay the big prices to because of guys like Howard and Kobe. Yeah, I think so. That was I thought that was funny. Yeah, Meta World Peace never a loss for words there. <laughs> uh, Magic called into some other sports show that I don't know about today, and uh, gave his thoughts, some more thoughts than you already quoted on uh, Dwight and the whole team situation there i think that mike brown would have an awesome team on the floor he'll have a team that he would love to coach because of the fact that now as we all know mike brown is a great defensive coach he gets uh the best defensive player in the in, in basketball and dwight howard coming to his team and now he can do so many different things defensively and off offensively with a guy like uh dwight howard so I think that the shortcomings of any player in terms of defensively for the Lakers, uh, Dwight Howard will erase. And then uh, it's made all the Laker players better. When you get a guy like Dwight Howard, he makes the other Lakers better. And uh, this puts the Lakers right in the championship hunt. I disagree with Stephen A. The Lakers are going to be better than Oklahoma because of the fact that the Thunder like to attack the basket. That's where they beat the Lakers, attacking the basket, getting easy layups, easy shots within the paint. And Dwight Howard will erase those easy layups and easy baskets. And then Steve Nash will allow the Lakers to be a better perimeter perimeter team because, as we all Magic know, drinking. Uh, the Thunder <laughs> packed it in. So. Uh, with Steve Nash, they won't be able He's to do that. Sure. They'll, he'll be mm-hmm. able to stretch the floor, hit the three-point shot. Uh, Steve's been known to do that. And the Lakers made critical mistakes in the fourth quarter of all those games. That's why they lost. That won't happen again with Steve Nash because he'll be controlling the ball. And so uh, we all know that the Thunder are a talented team, but they're not a smart team. And so the Lakers, if they play smart, they're better than the Thunder. I agree, actually. The, the Thunder do have a lot of learning to pick up on. They're yeah, probably they're the young. most talented team in the league. Right. 
I think from a pure talent standpoint as a team, they're more talented than even Miami. But Miami's got more smarts and experience than they do, and I think that's what carried them to the title. Yeah, they're a young team, and they really don't have that veteran who's like a coach on the floor kind of person. Right, they picked up D. Fish, but he doesn't play very much, so yeah. it's well, hard to coach on the floor. Towards the end of the year, too. Right, and he didn't know the team as well. So Yeah, but yeah, I, I agree. I think they one of the most talented. Um, one thing I think that's going to help out with the Lakers is, like he was saying, you know, there's Howard there to clog up the middle. Yep. And they are going to ha- I don't know, I, you know, and I think it was partly Bynum's fault, but Bynum was outside of the key too many times on yes. defense. Well, and I don't know if that's the coach's fault or just Bynum, yeah, could be. you know, saying, uh, this, you know, I think part of it was Bynum's fault because I don't think Mike Brown ever wanted Bynum to take a three pointer, in which he took a few. Oh, my God. Um, and Bynum always wandered out of the key. And defense and I, offense, he was out of the key. Right. And Howard knows where he belongs as far as a team player. Yeah, he knows his role. He's the big man, just like Shaq right. was the big man. And they know that your spot is the middle of the key uh, down in the, at the bottom there. You know, uh, even on defense, like, Bynum would come out and then they drive down the middle because there's no one clogging up the lane. Right. And they did that to him so many times. On offense, Bynum came out, and I think this threw off Gasol's game the whole season. Gasol had a not very good season this year. A pretty bad season, I think we could all admit. And I think a lot of it had to do with playing with Bynum. This is the most they've played together because this is the first season Bynum hasn't been injured in a long time at, for some ex- you know amount of time. And I think the fact that Bynum was coming out on offense, kind of making Gasol take shots he's not used to taking, I think this would be great for Gasol because Dwight Howard's not going to leave the key. His only shots are you know dunks and layups. Right. There, there's no, uh, you know, like Bynum used to pretend he could shoot the ball and little hook shots and little shots. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Get back in the key, you jackass. But uh, now Dwight Howard's going to be down low and only down low, freeing up the rest of you know the mid range for Gasol. And I think that's going to work out for him perfectly. Yeah. Other than the All Star game, I don't recall Dwight Howard ever attempting a three pointer. <laughs> right, and that doesn't count. So yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, other than like if the shot clock's going down and the ball is somehow in your hand, if you're that tall, you should not be shooting the three pointer. Exactly. Unless you're uh, Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah. Bottom line is, if you're a Laker fan and you know anything about Lakers. I think you're ecstatic, not only that you actually have Dwight Howard, but that you're actually rid of Bynum, who just is lazy. It's it's not that he's not talented. He's extremely... He's, he could be the best. ...talented, but he's such a lazy asshole. He could have been the best. Yeah. Uh, finally, the last of the comments I have on this is from Stephen A., who I can't stand, though most of the time he is usually dead on. He, you know, he called it from the beginning that LeBron was going to Miami. He was right. He's always right. It pisses me off because I can't stand him. But uh, he apparently spoke to Dwight late last night, Thursday night. After the I did, too. Did you? Yeah. How'd that go? Um, not bad. No, that's good. It's kind of personal. Phone sex? Yeah. Fair enough. Well, they didn't have phone sex, but they spoke, and apparently Dwight was really excited. Here's a little clip from Stephen A. talking about that meeting. Well, he was ecstatic. He was jumping for joy, obviously. Uh, just happy to have the ordeal over after everything that he's been through uh, the last few months, recognizing he made a huge mistake by electing to opt into his contract in March, thus giving the Orlando Magic the power uh, to, to basically put him through a lot of the stuff that, that ultimately he was put through over the last few months. He knows that he played an integral role in that happening, and to finally have it over yeah, is good enough in and of itself. <laughs> More but like to be he playing for Orlando a team that's an obvious champion contender to be playing with one of the greatest players we've ever seen in Kobe Bryant to recognize that the uh, the, the alternative could have been significantly less and more detrimental to his career to ultimately end up being the Los Angeles Lakers in Hollywood where he's been living since April um, he's ecstatic and he was jumping for joy and to say that he reacted like a little kid would just it wouldn't do it justice. He was jumping up and down. He was absolutely ecstatic uh, that it's all over and it all appears. To yeah. Be- Oops. Sorry. Um, that was, was him it? jumping up and down, by the way. Right. That was not the next yeah. song I'm about to play. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's good. I hope he's excited because I know all the Laker fans are excited. I know all the Laker players have to be excited. I, I think, and, I, you know, Kobe came out and said, oh, congratulations, this is great, awesome. I think deep down inside, Kobe is so fucking happy because Mr. Competitor over there would not put up with somebody <laughs> who's like, oh, well, I just wasn't feeling it tonight. Mm. You know, Kobe comes out with broken fingers and the flu, and, you know, there's no not feeling it. That's just not an option for him. One thing Stephen A. just said, that it just hit me. Yeah. Um, when he said something about, well, Kobe, you know, was mentioning, 
you know, it's somebody that's going to carry the team on after I'm gone. Right. I have never heard Kobe say that about anybody on the Lakers. Well, Kobe actually said that in his Facebook post that I read. Um, let's see, what did he say? The Lakers landed a piece that will hopefully carry the franchise long after I'm gone. Yeah, I mean, I've never heard him say that about Bynum yeah. or anybody, but no. he's actually said that about uh, Howard. So that's that's I, true. It tells about his his confidence that you know yeah, Howard he, can you know take the torch and continue with the Laker tradition. Yeah, so he obviously respects Howard as a competitor, if nothing yeah. else. Yeah. So, and if Howard does choose to say, I think he will be that guy that that carries the Lakers on. You know, be, oh, yeah, becomes that franchise player once Kobe's gone. You know, because Kobe only has two seasons left on his contract. On the contract, so I, I think if there's no titles won, I think he's done. I think if they win a co- one or two, I think he'll stay for another one or two years in that transition phase of his career, and then kind of you know bow out after that. Yeah, I, I think we'll see how the team's doing at that time. Yeah, I, I I think Kobe might you know may maybe just kind of a gut feeling he'll sign a few one year contracts. Maybe. I think I think maybe one or two extra years on there, easy. It, yeah. But like we said, it's all depend on how they do. If they play like shit for the next two years somehow with people like Steve Nash and Dwight Howard on the team, uh, <laughs> you know, then uh, I think we'll see him leaving. But I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, if, if it becomes another Gary Payton, Carl Malone nightmare. <laughs> well, I was going to bring that up. You know, what we picked up Gary Payton, Carl Malone. Um, we obviously had Kobe. I mean, we had an all-star team. And it, just, it was a nightmare. Just terrible chemistry. Glenn, we had, what do we have? Glenn Rice, even? I think that was post Rice. Was that after Rice? I think yeah. I think Rice is gone by then. Oh okay. I mean, we just but either way, we had an All Star team. Yeah. We had the Western All Star team on our team, and it was awful. Um, too many egos. Yeah. I'm I'm sure a lot of that had to do with Gary Payton because he's a douche. Yeah. Great Gary, player, but a douche. Yeah. We're, has he ever won a championship? I don't believe so. Uh, the, I mean, he's been with some good teams. Right. I mean, the Sonics never won, right? With no. him on him. And when he was he left the Lakers and went to the Heat. I don't think the Heat won with him. Not while he was there, because they never yeah, won until Shaq so went over there. Right. With and I don't, I don't think Shaq and Peyton were right, there at the same time. Because to my knowledge, this is their second title that they right. just won. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They won against. Uh, was it 2004? I don't know. Yeah, four or five. Shaq is Shaq came over from the Lakers to Miami. Yeah. And, and D Wade was a rookie, I think, and they won. <laughs> rookie or second year. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Anyways, on that note, I can talk about this for the entire show. But there everybody is everybody else is. But hey, we got more stuff to cover. Right. Uh, huge news throughout the rest of the sports world, including. Oh yeah. Worst song ever. Um, this has become like the, the Tebow of basketball because <laughs> this the story is retarded, but I had to play the song. Jeremy Lin, as y'all know, went to Taiwan. He's going to host a youth camp in China. Uh, he's hoping that he can get more Chinese kids interested in basketball. I have one question Ooh. for Jeremy Lin. Yes? What's the difference between Taiwan and Thailand? Taiwan and Thailand? Well, yeah. it's two different countries. Oh, okay. Taiwan is a Both province. Thai. Yes. Taiwan is a pre- uh, province of China. Yes, they both speak Chinese. So. And Thailand is, a, I think they're else. separate, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. So, I do know that Taiwan speaks uh, Mandarin, and China speaks Cantonese. Good Chinese. God, you're smart, right? I don't know. Yeah. How do you not know this? Yeah, hi. <laughs> doesn't I'm everybody? I'm impressed. Uh, hello. Wow. Anyways, uh, so moving on, because yeah. that really doesn't matter. Because enough of our uh, uh, geography lesson. Now yeah. on to sports. Enough of Jeremy Wren. Yeah. Dirk Nowitzki. Thank you very much. Yeah, Dirk, Dirk Nowitzki, excuse me, uh, got married late July, but it wasn't uh, leaked to the media until this week. He got married to uh, an, a former Kenyan. Her name is Jessica Olsen. Uh, they got married on July 20th. They actually have a picture of them at their uh, Kenyan traditional marriage on our Facebook, facebook.com slash the charity strike. No, it's not photoshopped. A, they really are wearing those outfits. And B, Dirk Nowitzki really is that ugly. Ooh, wow. Yeah. So check it out, uh, the charity strike.com. Or, no, that's not right. Facebook.com slash the charity strike. Uh, in the words of Trick, I'm like, man, these keystones really fucking me up. Uh, you are a fucking pussy. Yeah, yeah so about to- these keystones just just make me make me act all weird. Oh, not yeah. the fact there's a vagina city next to me. <laughs> we need to get back to the wine coolers. I know, it's, right? These keystones are too strong. Yeah, pass me that strawberry kiwi, would yeah, you? Yeah, no kidding. Oh, you fucking pussy. Yeah. So Dirk Nowitzki got a ki- uh, ring from uh, Cuban last year, so now he's got another yeah. ring from from. 
What's her name this year? Yeah, Jessica. Whatever. Jessica. Her name. Yeah. Yeah. That's Jessica it. Olsen. So, is she and one of the Olsen twins? By the way. Almost. Okay. Uh, she's she's their older black sister. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that they adopted from Kenya. Yeah. There's different strokes part two. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, and also the Cavs have signed former Jazz CJ Miles. Uh, he was a Jazz swingman. So I like to I like CJ Miles. I think he's a good player. So hopefully that works uh, yeah, out well for um, yeah. Get off the yeah. bench. Yeah. They got they got Kyrie over there. Kyrie and CJ. Kyrie. So. Yeah. You know the one thing I gotta give Cavs props for is ever since they've lost LeBron, they've been trying to actually pick up halfway decent players. I feel like before LeBron came around, the Cavs were kind of like the Clippers. Where they didn't give a fuck about who was on the team. You know they just they were making their money and that was okay. It seems like ever since they lost LeBron, I, and it's probably in order to spite him, they've been trying to pick up a few people and. You know, they haven't gotten the big the big people yet, but they did have the rookie of the year last year, and now they got C.J. Miles, and uh, they were originally a part of a four-team deal, including, you know, for Dwight Howard, but they backed out. Yeah, they're trying. Um, it's going to be well for them. I, I think uh, part of the bad spot for the Cavs is their ownership. Yes. <coughs> Which was a problem for the Clippers for many years, and all of a sudden, I think it has to do with, with the new GM. Must be. To miss the owner to... Changes mind or something. I don't know. Yeah, it must be. That's all I got for basketball. You got anything for us basketball? I have no more for basketball. All right. On that note, at this point, we'll go real quick to. Okay. We're close enough. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, the the NHL. Huh? What? Oh, I just woke up. Good morning. The NHL and the uh, NHLPA are still in the CBA talks. Lots of acronyms there. Um, After Thursday's meeting, the sides are even farther apart, and uh, it's looking closer to a work stoppage. Um, On Tuesday, I believe it is, the Players Association will present a counterproposal to the NHL's proposal. Um, So if you guys are hoping for hockey in December at this point, make it January. Yeah, it looks like they're um, it, at one point they were nicey nicey. You know, right. we're, we're working things out. We're going to a marriage counselor. Now it's the point where uh, things aren't going so well that if they don't see my point of view, we're going to lock them out. So, right, uh, Commissioner, um, and I, I'm trying to pronounce because hockey names are very weird. They're Canadian. Yeah. So Commissioner Gary Beefmane, Beef uh, yeah, whatever his name uh-huh. is. Yeah, he said that it's very clear that uh, if Just they call don't him Commissioner Gary, CG. Yeah, what's up, CG? If, yeah, if they don't, if things don't work out by the deadline, uh, we're gonna lock them out. And that's in September, right? September fifteenth is the deadline. All right. Well, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'd like to get uh, Adam's cousin on here, maybe we'll talk about that. Let's please do that from uh, what what the puck hockey block. I like it. Yeah, we'll see what he has to say. Maybe we can get him on the phone. One of my favorite days. hockey shows. Yeah, even though it's a blog. Yeah, yeah. Right. one of my favorite hockey blogs, I mean. Ah, there you go. All right. Well, as we all know, Olympics is happening, so unfortunately, it's Olympic time. So, you haven't watched the Olympics this week? Let me run it down for you. Usain Bolt wins a bunch of gold medals for running. U.S. women wins a gold. Sprinter Mateo Mitchell Breaks his leg in a 1,600-meter relay race, but keeps running. Um, and then gets the U.S. into the fifth, and they advance on to the next round. Who gives a shit? Yeah. 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 And then Kobe scored 20 points in the second half against Australia the night, which they won 86-73. And then afterwards, he was immediately drug-tested by the IOC. Wow. Or uh, what? I, uh, international? Yeah, IOC. Um, apparently, if you do well, you must be on drugs. Um, so there's that. Yeah, that was surprising to me that he got drugged. I didn't hear that. Yeah, at least he didn't test him for of white women. Of course, I heard it first from a charity strike. Right. Yeah, he was, for some reason, according to his teammates, and it didn't um, go into detail, he was pissed off in the second half over something. Oh, was he? Which, yeah, I guess. And Kobe Mad is an excellent player. You don't want to piss Kobe off. You don't want to piss him, him off if you're on. Even Carmelo said that. I've played against him when he's pissed off, and you don't want to do that. So I, don't, I don't know what happened, but uh, uh, Durant even said somebody made him mad. I could see it in his eyes. And it was a, it was a physical game in the first half. One of the uh, Australian players went to the bench with a bloody nose. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it was pretty physical. 
and for some reason Kobe was pissed off and there, there's been rumors that um, they were uh, you know talking about Kobe not you know showing up for the Olympics right. and c- just kind of you know sandbagging and all that and you know, maybe that had something to do with it but he, well sandbag no more he's 20 points and a half something bitches. pissed him off and he started even the Australian crowd started chanting Kobe yeah yeah so. and he, he's actually friends with one of the Australian swimmers girl or guy girl surprising mm-hmm. Stephanie Rice yeah he so. saw her bent over a chair and and that was the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Kobe in Denver. Can't be stopped. Ooh. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, fuck you, IOC. Just because he's an awesome player. Don't need to drug test him. Yeah. Well, he he passed, right? Uh, I, guess, I haven't heard otherwise. All I've heard is that he was tested. I think that was last night, right? The only thing I heard is we studied the night before. So, I think he was okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah. On that note, it's time for my Olympic rant. Um, I happened to turn right. on the other day. And there was some stupid thing where people were on horses jumping over things. And they kept talking about how great of athletes these horse riders were. Uh, you guys realize they're not actually working, that it's the horse that's doing all the work here. They're just sitting there. It pisses me off. So I have a small list of sports that I don't know why are sports in the Olympics. Badminton. Why is <laughs> badminton a sport? Because the word bad. Oh, I think people just like saying shuttlecock on TV. A bad mitten to me would be like if you're out in the snow and your hands are freezing. You have bad mittens. Right, you got a hole in your you thumb got, there. Yeah, hey yeah, man, I got mittens. some bad mittens here. I gotta, yeah, I gotta I, get new ones. Yeah, I can't. I gotta stop shopping at the Goodwill store. So. Yeah, that is only competitive in China. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, badminton. Hate table it. tennis. Uh, if you're not Forrest Gump, who gives a shit about table tennis? Yeah, table tennis is like to me if you're fighting over the last piece of uh, chicken or whatever. Right. I think beer pong is a better sport than oh, table tennis. That should be an Olympic that sport. Should, that actually takes a little bit of talent there. you got to aim it yeah. and bouncing and swatting and behind the yeah, back. Plus, if you're drunk and trying to win. Man, four four or five games deep after losing a couple? Yeah. <laughs> that was rough. That was a rough night. So fuck you, table tennis. You're not a sport. There's First of all, in those two, badminton and table tennis, how much athleticism do you really need to fucking hit that shit? If it's something you can play drunk on the beach, it's not a sport. There you go. No one plays basketball drunk on the beach, right? It'd be hard to bounce the ball. They do, but... I mean, it's not very successful. Uh, So that's retarded. Also, archery. Why is archery (laughs) a sport? Uh, Pretty sure there's no athleticism involved whatsoever. It's kind of like golf. It's a great hobby, but you don't need to be athletic to do it. Yeah, just get your ex-wife to set, have her stand there by the target. You can't right. miss. Target practice. Yeah. Uh, so archery, fuck you. You're not a sport. You're a skill. Uh, also, the whole, well, I kind of covered this already, the whole equestrian thing. Uh, the horse is doing all the work. All you have to do, be, do is be short and lightweight, and you can be in the Olympics. Awesome. Uh, that's all I have to say. So and then, Yeah, they, so the, I mean... Words like hockey and baseball and all that in the Olympics. Right. Well, I guess well, hockey hockey's, w- hockey's Winter Olympics. Yes. This is summer. See, and there's my rant. Hockey should be in the summertime. But it's, well, you know, traditionally I ice. know it's on the ice, but, but nowadays. Thing, but yeah, I mean, you can go into an arena where you have the ice. You can make your own ice and it's air conditioned. Who would, ru- there's more people that would like to see a hockey game only because they're hot. Right, they're dehydrated. So let's <laughs> let's get the fuck out of the sunshine. Oh, good. There's a hockey game. We're gonna cool off, and then they might even learn to like hockey. Right, and I'm sure to the two of you that are actually listening to the show, hey, Trigger and Mike, uh, no, pew, pew. <laughs> that was gay. That we're not real big hockey fans. No, nope. I would rather watch hockey than probably ninety percent of the sports in the Olympics. I think I'd watch rather watch hockey than which is the, ec- ec- the, the horse thing. the horse thing, equestrian, the whore thing. Yeah, the whore thing. I, yeah. No, I like the whore thing. Oh yeah, no, that yeah. should be an Olympic sport. It should be better than actually. A I think it is from what I've heard from going on behind the Olympic Village. Hey now, yeah, Kobe's been hanging out I with heard the bitches. They had to up their condom, right? Anyway, and finally, uh, I'll end this rant because we're going really long here. Oh, yeah. Synchronized swimming. That's what she said. Yes. Why is synchronized swimming <laughs> an Olympic sport? <laughs> yeah. uh, I love watching the girls with the little. For some reason, the girls in equestrian or question in synchronized swimming tend to have a little bit more ass hanging out of the bathing suit, which I am more than okay with. But uh, how is that a sport? It's just really a contest to see how long you can hold your breath while kicking your legs up. Any of these sports that you just mentioned, and I agree with you, Yes. which I'm sorry I do because I love to argue. Right. Uh, Dick. 
mm, yeah, not right now. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, I think they would be a much better sport if they would play the sport. I'm talking to the females only in the same uniform that they do the beach volleyball. Yes. Then I would watch. I agree. Including everything. You know, volleyball, beach, or indoor are two of my favorite Olympic sports for the females. Because beach volleyball, you get the girls in bikinis. Usually not such a bad thing. Though this year, they've allowed them to not wear bikinis. Fucking IOC. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Please. But indoor <coughs> volleyball, they wear those tight little fucking shorts. Oh, my God. I remember when I was in high school, the cheerleaders that we had, not very attractive. The volleyball players, good fucking Lord. Oh, my God. They were hot. And uh, it, it tends to go through into the, the Olympics. Still hot. Sorry, I'm trying to remember my high school. Oh, they had high school back then? I don't remember. Oh, well, real, real quickly, and I had already had this rant planned out, but uh, Trick of Mike actually called in and left us a voicemail uh, and ranted a little bit about the Olympics himself. Here's that. Hey, it's Trick of Mike. Oh, uh, Mike is how I like to be known as, but guess I'll settle for the nickname still. Your fag. Anyways, uh, want two things, talk about two things real quick. Is you Keith, won the 100 meter up? and 200 meter dash gold <laughs> this year, here? and he did it four years ago. I get nervous and people talk about him as dope. being the greatest athlete of all time, which I think is absolutely fucking retarded. Yes, like he's a badass Keith for being able to run really <laughs> fast, but what else can he do? Can he really do what a fucking mixed martial artist can do? Can he wrestle, grapple, uh, strike? Can he do all that shit and be a badass? Is he really a better athlete than John Jones, Anderson Silva, or GSP? Hell, that's just a sport that nobody thinks about. What about football, basketball, all those sports that people are doing more than one thing, and that's running. How about football players where they run and then hit each other? I think it's the most retarded thing. And to call out the person, Tony Kornheiser from PTI says that Usain Bolt is the greatest athlete he's ever seen. Shut up, Tony Kornheiser, you stupid fucking bastard. Anyways, uh, Greg... Congratulations on getting Dwight Howard, or sorry, rebound. Oh, congratulations oh, on getting a rebounder on your team. And <laughs> uh, I have an open mouth in case you need Whoa. a cum deposit, and my throat is willing to swallow. So I'm here for you, buddy. I know you need to masturbate to that news of uh, getting Dwight Howard. So and getting rid of Bynum, I, I think, is the thing you're most happy about. <laughs> about Can't wait to hear times. about it. Have a good one, guys. I got a good one right here. Yeah, it's good and plenty. Yeah, cut him off of the wine coolers. <laughs> yeah, right? Wow. Um, so that was the uh, I'm a bitch trigger Mike, who obviously can't handle talking in front of vaginas. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, on that note, I think we should take a break. Oh, before we take a break, I want to say one thing. He is right in some sense. Um, I hate to admit it. MMA is a great sport, and that could easily be in the Olympics. If wrestling is in the Olympics, why I not agree. MMA? It's it's a very uh, around-the-world sport. Many countries, many nations participate. Uh, now, the only thing I disagree with is football. Though football is awesome, many other countries don't play American-style football, which would True. which would not make it a very good Olympic sport. So until other nations pick up on, on yeah. our talent level of football, that won't be a good Olympic sport. It'll just be like watching the original Dream Team walk all over everybody. True. So there's that. Anyways, I think we should take a break. We have gone extra long. That's Sorry. what she said. Oops. While we're gone, check out thecharitystrike.com. Make sure you get on our Facebook, facebook.com slash thecharitystrike. Twitter, at thecharitystrike, no E at the end there. And make sure you give us a call. It's 805-419-3679. And we'll be right... Ew. Man, I can't even fucking talk. Call us! Yeah, we'll be right back with more beer. Yes. And not these stones. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm Tony. I'm Brandon. You're supposed to repeat after me. <laughs> <laughs> We're from the 70s. We're from the 70s. No, we got to start over. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm, I'm Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, okay. <laughs> repeat everything but his name. But oh, your name. Okay. Yeah, the names Not literally. Name. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm Brandon. I'm Tony. <laughs> We're from the 76th Street Podcast. Blow it up. Blow it up. We didn't have to tell you that because we're You already know. Up. You've heard us before. You already know. You've told your friends. You've liked our fan page. You've probably been to our website. Several Street, times. 76streetpod.com where you've yeah. subscribed to our podcast yeah. on iTunes. Hey, this is more like a you're welcome. 
You're welcome. If you get a chance. <laughs> if you get a chance. Let the couple friends that haven't heard about it. Just let a them couple. know. You're welcome. Tell all your friends. Subscribe to our Twitter feed. Subscribe to our podcast. And don't worry. There's going to be 30% less Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go to 76streetpod.com, there is no Brandon. <laughs> Thank God. <sighs> yeah, that happened. <laughs> and there it is. And there you have it. Welcome back in, everybody. This is still, surprisingly, but still the Charity Strike. I am your host, this with the mostest, Greg the Rebound Jones. Sitting across from me, Midlife Crisis. Oh, yeah. We're back, bitches. That's right, bitches. Don't We're forget. angry over wine coolers. Yeah. Strawberry yeah. kiwi. Fuck you. Yeah. 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 We're going to go crazy. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to get some fucking strawberry kiwi and break it over your head. Yeah. That's right. Pink. I like pink. Pink means pussy. Ooh. Okay. Yes. Anyways, welcome back in. Make sure you guys, if you want to call us, it's 805-419-3679. That's the number to call. You can get us at thecharitystrike.com, facebook.com slash thecharitystrike, and tweet with us at thecharitystrike, no E at the end. And if you're also an Adam Reggie fan, make sure you tweet with the hashtag Reggie thinks that's gay. Oh. Because if it has to do with man stuff like sports, well, Reggie thinks that's gay. All right, Reggie. Fair enough. Anyways, uh, why don't we move our way into baseball, huh? Huh? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Now, there's lots of teams throughout this land, but I'm proud to be a Cubby fan. Believe me, 84 was just the start. We're going to bring a pennant to this part. Hey, I'm a Cub fan. I'm a Cub fan. And I'm a Bud man. I'm a Bud man. Ooh, Holy cow. We'll win the series before we through. Ah, uh, yes. And I open one and drink one for you, Harry Carey. Oh, yeah. You are my favorite alcoholic. Indeed. Anyways, baseball news. R.A. Dickey pitches his fourth complete game this season. He said Dickey. Yeah. He only allows one run, gets 10 strikeouts, and uh, he has 15 wins on the season. Blowing up. The man's on fire. He is on fire. Yes, he is. Indeed. Um, from, uh, you know, basically getting kicked out of the league. Yeah. now being on top of the league. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Too bad he's on the Mets. Mm-hmm. I'd take him on the Dodgers. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Uh, and there was a bad call last night at the Yankees game. I'll, uh, I'll let Midlife explain the for Yankees us. game, yes. Yes. Yeah, it was the Yankees versus Detroit. Uh, actually, what happened was there was a ground ball, and I'm, I'm trying to think uh, who was batting. Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, there's a ground ball, and uh, it was down the third baseline where the umpire started to raise his hand. Now, when the umpire raises both hands, it's, you know, no, ball. no play, foul ball. The ball's dead. Um, so he started, he got like up to maybe his head, and then realized the ball was fair, and he started to point fair ball, fair, and he did it three times. And uh, enough to confuse the outfielder. So the outfielder right. just kind of, you know, jogged to the ball, and said, oh, it's a foul ball. And uh, ended up to a big brawl where Girardi was kicked out and everything. But you know, just uh, you know, once once again, it was another thing where the umpire screwed up, and um, in his own admission, he said, "I started to put my hands. I started to put my hands up," is what he said. I was a little quick, which is what it was why yeah. I said. You get that a lot. Yeah, uh, and then I saw the ball hit the chalk line, and I pointed fair about three times <laughs> after I, after I already said it was foul. I pointed fair three times, so they should have known. Oh, that makes it better. Yeah. And uh, his name is Welkie. He said, I don't think it had any impact, which he's... Clearly it did. Yeah, it did. Or he's as drunk as we are. Uh, he might have been. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, and he actually watched the, he watched the replay. He said, even after watching the, the replay, I don't think there's an impact on the outfielder. I don't think Ibanez even saw me, and we got ah, the call right. That's why he stopped running. Yeah, Ibanez's uh, response was, "I was surprised that he called it fair because it was he already called it foul." And um, bottom line is, Girardi, the Yankees manager, um, who obviously argued, which I don't blame him. Yes, and was ejected. And um, was that a quick ejection? Mm, it's a premature ejection. Yeah, I hate that. This, yeah, well, it happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah, the kind of I mean, so that you know that's the end of that, and I'm surprised. Well, he was going to um, protest the game, and uh, he with uh, well, if you protest the game and you win the game, 
Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, and the, the funny thing about it all, well, not the funny thing about it all, because I huh. think the whole thing was you know, ridiculous, but uh, Girardi, the Yankees manager, has been thrown out of three games all year. Yeah. All three games against Detroit. Oh, there you go. So, well, you know what that means? Umpires like Detroit. That and fuck Detroit. Yeah. And Del Young. Um, moving on then. MVP this year, we got two front runners. We got Cabrera, we got Trout. Who do you think should take it? Okay, here's another. Um, yeah. Uh, Jim Leland obviously is pulling for Cabrera. Uh, and he says, I don't mean this disrespectfully. Mike Trout's had an awesome year. I respect Mike Trout. He's a great player. Uh, but this is, you know, he's a rookie. And uh, the thing, uh, Magrera, uh, Cabrera's been in the league for several years I now. Mabrera, that's like Miguel Cabrera put together. Yeah, Mabrera. Well, we'll just call him Mabrera. Uh, what I was going to say later on in the in the in this was Leland calls him Miggy. Oh, which is more gay than Magrera. Right. So, but yeah, uh, Leland says, you know, I know the kid is twenty years old, and everybody gets excited about that because he's young and. Uh, it has a nice ring to it and so on and so forth. And personally, I'm an Angel fan. Yes. But my personal opinion is, yeah, Trout's having an awesome year. And him and Cabrera are really close in their stats. Yes, they are. But I would I would personally go with Cabrera. Yeah. Because he's, you know, he's been in the league for a while and he's consistent in his stats. Uh, Trout, who, you know, again, I said he leads the league with uh, 87 runs and 36 stolen bases. But Cabrera has um, enjoyed productive seasons one after the other, and uh, he's got a, you know he's batting three twenty three with twenty nine home runs. I would go with Cabrera, but Trout easily gets Rookie of the Year. Oh, d- no question about it. I would say Trout's Rookie of the Year. I would say Cabrera's you know MVP. Yeah. Um, but I have to agree with Leland as far as that's concerned. That, yes. Uh, yeah. Which is pretty big coming from an Angels fan. It is. It that is. took a lot of you. To, it uh, did. Admit yeah, that. I had to uh, get on my knees and pray to Mike Sosha, mm. mm-hmm. you know, to, mm-hmm. to give me forgiveness. Yes. But uh, I have to kind of agree with Leland that you know Cabrera, you know, he's been in the league for a while and he's pretty consistent on his stats. So well, we'll have to see how the rest of the season plays out. I believe postseason starts October fifth. I think that's the first uh, wild card game. I think you're right of yeah. the new playoff yeah. system. So we'll right. see. We'll see. Uh, you know, if they both continue to produce up until then. But I got to say, Mike Trout is uh, and not just as an Angel fan, but I'm saying Mike Trout just um, is just one of the most awesome rookies. Oh yeah, that's been around in the league for years. He's easily the team MVP. Oh no question He's about making it. Making Pujols look like an overpaid bitch. Well, <laughs> um, I'm a Pujols fan. Oh. It took Pujols a while to get into so it, though. He did well. He does that. Yeah, he's done that the last couple of years, and uh, I, I think that we're noticing more this year because of the team he's on, with the with the and, the, and the media money he was given, and the yeah, obviously the money, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I would say you know Trout is. I think Trout's going to be a awesome player for years to come. I agree. So hopefully the Angels hang on to him. Uh, yeah. Oh, they and don't you know, trade him to the Yankees. <coughs> yeah. To share. Right. Yeah, yeah, if they don't, I think it'd be stupid. Yeah. I mean, Trout was, I mean, from high school to minor league ball, he's dominated. And every, everywhere he's gone, he's dominated. And the the, the, the real test, of obviously, is the major leagues, and he's dominating right. in the major leagues. So. I, think, I think the next test for him is to see if he can do it two years in a row. Exactly. Yeah, maybe he just had a you know good season. We'll exactly. And some people somebody, do that. Yeah, somebody has the old, what they call sophomore drink. Yeah. Sophomore drink. Whatever it's called. Or jinx. Or something. I've had the sophomore drink. That's why I'm saying that. Right. But yeah, the sophomore jinx sometimes. But uh, yeah, I think yeah, uh, I think Trout's the real deal. Yeah, we'll have to see how so, he uh, yeah. continues in. And then a little more baseball news: 16-year-old Japanese Yuki Matsui struck out 22 batters uh, in a high school uh, baseball tournament in Japan. So look for him to join you, Darvish, as some extremely overpaid pitcher. <laughs> and the Rays haven't lost a game since getting Longoria back on Tuesday. Maybe that's a good sign for them to finally have him back. And finally, baseball news, Indians fire their, their pitching coach, Scott Radinsky. Oh, no. Yeah, something with that name, Scott, just, uh, you know. I was, I was thinking Radinsky. Oh, that yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got for baseball, though. I think it's 
what we really need to get into is football. Football. It's the sport of kings. Uh, gayest song ring. ever. That's why we're here to sing football. Football. Well, in a not so surprising move, Ryan Matthews suffers a broken clavicle in no, his very again. first. Not, not just his very first preseason game, but his very first carry of his preseason game, and he'll be out for at least four to six weeks. Way to go, Chargers. Yeah, good job. Well, and Ryan Matthews, who's uh, supposedly the apparent, the heir apparent of LaDainian Tomlinson. Still, he wasn't hurt all the time. He, yeah, but he's just like injury prone. So once again, he uh, he's going to be out for a while. And actually... Most people don't know this, but he was involved in a car crash on Monday. Ah, uh, yes, I heard about that. Oh, a minor car crash. Only, only the charity strike knows this. Yes. But anyway, yeah, there's not yes, um, no, no serious injuries, but obviously he's going to be out for a while. So once again... Um, the Chargers are fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way to go, San Diego. Something to do with San Diego sports in general. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It took the Clippers a long time after moving out of San Diego to get over that. At least I'm not uh, beaten off in an intersection. Well, like San Diego Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, he loves it, though. Well, I'm not a Padre fan. Yeah. Padre fans do that. They do. Yeah. A lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Because um, they can't get laid. No. So instead they if beat you, off If you go to a bar and try to pick up a girl and you, you tell her you're a Padre fan, right? she'll walk away. Until they hit the intersection? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, Jonathan Vilma is back in court today. Uh, he was hoping for a decision from the court on his lawsuit against Roger Goodell in the NFL. No decision was made as uh, the judge was not sure if she could legally make a decision, but she actually said that she sided on the uh, players mm-hmm. in this situation, which I do as well. He'll have to wait till August 30th until the next hearing to get a decision out of it. But here's also what I like. Drew Brees was there with Jonathan Vilma in support, uh, which to me is just another middle finger to Roger Goodell. Drew Brees has not been quiet about how he feels about NFL and Roger Goodell and the whole uh, Bounty Gate proceedings and how bullshit it is and the way they went about it. And this is one more middle finger to Roger Goodell from Drew uh, saying, fuck off. So go Drew Brees. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, Drew, uh, he's backing him up. And um, the, the more this goes along, the more I'm changing my stance and yeah. back at the players. But yeah, yeah, actually, Drew had a, a quote saying, I have not seen anyone conduct himself with a higher degree of professionalism, work ethic, responsibility, and genuine care for his teammates than Jonathan Vilma. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, Drew's back in... And and Drew's not something you know to joke about. He's highest paid quarterback uh, in the absolutely, NFL. Absolutely, yeah. And he's telling Roger Goodell to fuck off. So yeah. I think that means something. I, I think it, yeah. I think Drew would carry a lot of weight in the league and in the the you know the proceedings, the proceedings and all that. Yeah. So um, other football news, not so NFL related. LSU's cornerback, star cornerback, uh, Tyran Matthew, has been dismissed from the team for rule violations. They have not specified what the final rule violation was, but in the past he has been busted for what they called synthetic marijuana. Oops. Yikes. So he's looking to transfer. I guess at this point his real options, if he wants to play, he's a junior. If he wants to play right away, his only option is to transfer uh, down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He has to, to, to go able, down. He has to go down to conference right. in order to play right away. Um, so the, I guess what they're saying is his goal would probably be to transfer down, play immediately, and then try to go pro next year. Yeah. Transfer down or sit out of season. Yeah, he'll pro- most likely transfer down, and hopefully a uh, NFL team will pick him up. Yeah, he's hoping so. Yeah, um, but he's got a lot of trouble on him already. So he does. He's a good, talented player, and just kind of some apparently had a, a rough childhood. Yeah. So um, it'll be interesting to see if any NFL team is interested in that. I hear the Lions enjoy that kind of stuff, so they'll probably pick him up. I'm surprised the Raiders aren't. The, yeah, the Raiders, the yeah. Lions, they love criminals. Yeah. So there's there's that. It's a bit of breaking news. To that all happened today, Friday. Um, preseason, as we said, is underway. And a few teams played last night, Thursday. Peyton, he uh, looks good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, Broncos beat the Bears. He's a handsome man. He, yeah. His throw's not bad either. Uh, the Broncos beat the Bears 31-3. to Peyton looked pretty good. Didn't play a whole lot of plays. And didn't throw too long, but uh, in what he was involved in, looked pretty good. So everyone on the, on the uh, Broncos are hopeful. However, he did in- get intercepted. Mm. Yeah, 
His first drive close to the goal line, he was intercepted. But you know what? Here's my whole um, take on uh, the preseason. Yes. It's Who gives a fuck? Right. It's dumb. Yeah. It's, it's just stupid. And I, I, I laugh at the people that take it seriously. Oh, yeah. Where they'll take Peyton Manning. I mean, hopefully not the first game unless they're retarded. They'll take Peyton or whoever after a couple of preseason games. And say, oh, this is going to be a terrible year for this team or this player. It's preseason. Who cares? Right. They're, they're, you're trying to see who's going to make your team, who's not going to make your team. Right. I mean, and the starting lineup gets about eight downs, and they pull them. And yeah. I think deep down in your heart, no matter what you say to the media, every coach says, I really don't give a fuck if I win this game or not. Right. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. And who cares? And with the way the refs are going, no one really cares. <laughs> yeah, point. right. Um, also, um, Michael Vick hurt the same thumb that he hurt last year uh, during the regular season. He uh, came out of the game. X-rays showed it was negative. He'll see. He says he'll be at practice this weekend. So um, hopefully, nothing to worry about there for the Eagles. RG three throws a touchdown pass on his 14th snap of his NFL career. But once again, it's preseason, so no one was probably defending them that hard. Um, so we'll really have to wait till the Raiders yeah, it starts. Yeah, this is first game. You got to really wait till like at least the third game in a preseason. I know it doesn't matter, but. To right. really see what a person, uh, a rookie, you know, yeah. fresh out of college, is really made of, and pl- and then uh, obviously it's you know regular season where really you see what's going on. Yeah, and somebody with the hype of RG three, he's gonna have a target on the back of his head. So obviously, yeah. come come real, you know, regular season. I think he's gonna be taken out quite a bit. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and also the Falcons, Akeem Dent suffered a, hen- a head injury in their preseason opener, so he'll be out for a little bit as well. Uh, yeah, that that'll hurt a little bit. Yes, it will. Yeah, he uh, he was played nearly seventy percent of the Falcons' uh, special teams plays last year. Yeah, he so. was a big uh, part of the special yeah. team situation so there. We'll see. Yeah, hopefully he'll get a fast recovery. But it, in very important. Oh news, yes, the most important of preseason. Right. Uh, of <laughs> not just preseason, but football in general. Oh, absolutely. Tim Tebow says he is excited for their opener against Cincinnati tonight. Oh, Tim Tebow. Yes. We I'm dug a- that. D- yes, I do have splinters oh. <laughs> in my fingers <laughs> from scraping the bottom of that barrel. We needed a Tebow story, just like we needed a Jeremy Wren story. And we got it, people. And now we got one. Yes. So he's excited for tonight. Uh, and I'm sure Tebow will get a lot more playing time than people think because he actually is the backup quarterback. He's the second team quarterback. But Rex Ryan, the coach of Tim Tebow, said he's going to play approximately two quarters. That's half the game for the rest of you. And he's not, not, I said, not going to limit Tim Tebow's value up to this team. Or his fire. Or his fire. <laughs> no, we don't want to limit Tim Tebow's fire. I would never limit Tim Tebow's fire. Never. Uh, and not only is he a quarterback. Yes. But the Jets have listed him as a runner. Wow. And. And wait and for it. More. Wait, there's more. Yes. A punt protector. Oh, my God. He protects punts. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard they're also working on his release time on the ball. Yeah, he's trying to work on his release. Yeah, he has a bad quick release. Oh, yeah. wait. Team Tebow's fire. Oh, thank God we got that out of the way. Yes. Tim Tebow previous, previously from the Broncos. Yes. Now on the Jets. Now but, on the Jets. But since we've heard the chorus, we can move on to other news. Okay, then fuck him. Yeah, we'll leave this plane, though. Yeah. Fuck you, Tebow. Uh, yeah. Jim Harbaugh Asshole. announces that uh, Ted Jen. Fucking virgin. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Ted Jen will be the starter over Randy Moss this season, at least beginning of the season. That's kind of big news. You know, Everyone expected Randy Moss to uh, start for the 49ers. Actually, I'm not surprised. Not at all? No. Uh, Randy Moss is I he's personally. an old man. Yeah, he's, he's had his time. Yeah, well, Jim says that Teddy did really good in practice and in camp. So Yeah, I think Randy Moss is... Past his prime, I think he's ready to retire. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But I mean, he's still a great backup. Hold on a second. Oh, oh. boner, wow. boners all around. Have a cigarette. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, so we'll see how that works out. Also, hey, that's no cigarette. Yeah, hey now. Zip. Speaking of the 49ers, Michael Crabtree will play in his first preseason game ever. Uh, he's wow. injured so often, especially during the preseason, that he's never played a preseason game, and he will now play a preseason game. Uh, so there's that. Yeah. Um, replacement referees, as we mentioned earlier, are in effect. 
and they love to call the wrong thing. The other night in the Atlanta game, they called Atlanta, Arizona twice while making uh, calls. And the first time, they didn't even acknowledge the fact that they fucked it up. The second time, they said Arizona, Atlanta. So uh, you're an idiot. They've left mics on. They called a bad touchback call in Buffalo. And um, But the best part about this was that the NFL is basically trying to shut the teams up. They sent a memo out to all the teams saying, do not discuss the referee situation. And then... In their defense, just quickly. Yes. Uh, as far as the Atlanta and the Arizona thing, yes, they both start with an A. Right. Yeah. So I, I got that. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? They do? Wait. Oh, yeah. Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, just saying for the referee's point of view. Right. Of course. Even though Arizona was not involved in the Atlanta game. Um, but the NFL did send out a memo to all the teams saying, do not discuss it. And if they have to get... You know, they happen to get like kind of blocked into a corner there. The only way, and they gave them like um, pointers onto what to say to not down talk the referees, basically. Uh, so basically, the the NFL is embarrassed by the referee situation. I wonder why. Well, they need to come to a fucking agreement already. Yeah, they this is ridiculous. And then, as we mentioned last show, there uh, is the first. NFL female referee, referee, referee. What am I talking about, Jeremy Rennigan? Oh wow, referee. Uh, yeah, how huh? referee. referee. Her name is Shannon Easton, and uh, you know she's all excited to be a girl referee in the NFL because she's one of the scabs. But apparently, Skanks? yeah, that too. Oh. She has been accused of gambling. Oh no, no. Um, she took, uh, according to sources, she took part in the World Series of Poker, and NFL referees are not allowed to gamble in order to preserve their integrity. I'll poker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the World Series. I <laughs> know it. Oh, my God. Hold on. Beer time. Wait. Hang on. Mm. Wow. Mutual drinking. Yeah. This Keystone Light really fucking me up. Right, oh Trigger Mike? man. Yeah, you bitch. I'll never do that again. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, that's all we got for football and the rest of sports. Yeah. yeah. We're good now. Yeah, I think so. We got our T-Bow music going, which is always a blessing. Yes. We, as well as our fans, can now smoke a cigarette. We're done. Right. Yeah. The Kleenex is full. The cigarette is being lit. We have fucked you. Yes. You have enjoyed it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When don't you enjoy it? Whether you realize it or not. Yeah. This is the best fucking you've ever received. Yeah. Bitch. Sorry, b- sorry about your ass. Didn't mean to slip and get the wrong hole. Some like to call that the dolphin. Damn well. Have you heard of the dolphin before? When you're, when you're fucking a girl and you miss and you get her ass back in it and she goes, eh! <laughs> that is, in fact, the dolphin. I thought this was a sports show. What are you talking about? Oh my god. Anyways, we better Sounds get out of like here. A sport. Yeah, right. <laughs> we should Miami get out of here. Dolphins. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Hey, oh, there you go. Yeah. Boom. Anyway, sport related. Yeah. I sound like a Ranger Mike. Boom. 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 <laughs> uh, anyways, we better get out of here before it gets even worse. Yeah. Anyway, guys. Yes, we are the Charity Strike. You can check us out at thecharitystrike.com. Uh, while you're there, click on our Amazon banner, banner, not batter, but banner, as long as well as um, our audible.com banner. Everybody else is batter. Yes, but we're better. Yes. They're better, we're better. Amazon banner, if you're going to buy some for Amazon, click <coughs> on it. Nice. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It gives us a couple of cents from your purchase. Helps keep the show float. It's that makes like, sense. Yeah, it's like our floaties in the tsunami of shit. Shit. Yes. Also, click on the Audible uh, banner. If you like to listen to podcasts and audiobooks, click on Audible. It's audibletrial.com slash charity strike. You get a free audiobook download. That's pretty baller. Oh, yeah. That's a good yeah. deal. And while you're there, also click on new and old and uh, future episodes of the charity strike. You may Do you have wondering. midlife episodes? Always. Oh, every single one. Man. That's what people ask for the least. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you may be wondering, how do we get future episodes on there? Well, just go there and find out. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Why am I uh, things playing here? That's really Ooh, strange. Oh, your thing's playing. Yeah, I hate I'm watching happens. it. Oh, hey now. Uh, also, check us out on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash the charity strike. We got pictures. Hey, we got pictures of today's chick of the day. Make sure you get there. Uh, also, She's while you're, wet. She, yeah, she is fucking swimmers uh make sure you get us on twitter at the charity strick no e at the end of charity strick so it's basically charity strike minus the e it's fantastic and then uh finally give us an email the charity strike at yahoo.com oh and please call in we love uh callers and voicemails just like haiku hank it's 
three six seven nine. That's the number to call. Leave a voicemail, play it on the air. Call us. All that good stuff. Check us out on uh, our city radio and the Stitcher Radio app, as well as iTunes, and check out our buddies Yet I'm Reggie Show. Oh yeah. God, I think that's all I got for today. This has been great. It's been a great show. Yeah, it's time to go uh, wash my hands. Yeah. Yeah. And that note. Goodbye, everybody. Later, bitches.